Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Well, I don't know about y'all, but God has blessed me with this kingdom series. Man, this thing is, amen. Praise God. This, 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 the Lord is reminding us and revealing to us who we are. And most of all, he's reminding us of who he is. Amen. He never changes. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. The word of God said, he says, I change not. Amen. He said, don't even look for me to change. Amen. He said, I'm not going to change. Clothes are changed and hairstyles change, cards change, but he never changes. Amen. He never changes. Whatever he said yesterday, he means it today. Amen. The Bible says the words that have proceeded from his mouth will not return unto him void, but that those words will accomplish everything that he has purposed them to accomplish. Amen. Yep, the word of God stands on its own, stands by itself. Amen. Doesn't need your help or my help. The word of God stands all by itself. Amen. Hallelujah. It says heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will endure it forever. Amen. The Bible says the Lord spoke and his words frame the world. Amen. The very world that we see was framed by the words of God. Amen. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, tell him thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you have grown and that you are growing and that you are operating in the kingdom of God. Amen. I pray for your attention this morning so that we can grow even more. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Every kingdom has a king. It wouldn't be a kingdom without a king. It's only a kingdom because of a king. The king sets all the rules, establishes all the laws in his kingdom. Amen. And so the, our king is God. Our king is, is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. So we know that our king is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords and that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. The Bible says that when Jesus came, that he brought the kingdom on his shoulders. Amen. He brought the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit with him. He brought everything that we would ever need. Amen. Amen. He brought the kingdom. And he brought the kingdom so that we, uh, because we were lost, amen, because we were separated from the Father due to what Adam did in the garden, Jesus brought the kingdom so that we could reenter the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Adam happened to understand what the kingdom was all about before he fell because everything he needed, he had it in the Garden of Eden. Amen. He had no need, he had no need for anything. God created us in his image and in his likeness, meaning you have a will the same way God has a will. God made us to have our own will. We know that to be true because God said to Adam, he said, Adam, you can have anything in this garden you want, but this very tree, don't eat from it. He said, for when you do, you will surely die. Amen. See, he didn't tell Adam, I'm going to put a fence around it. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 put a hedge around it so you won't enter it. He left it out there in the wide open because he wanted Adam to choose him versus choosing his own will. Amen. Adam had a will. We saw Jesus' will in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. But Jesus realized that was his will. He said, no, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was in humanity, yet he was the son of God. Amen. Mary wrapped him in humanity, but he was the son of God. Isaiah said, on this day, a child is born and a son is given. Isaiah was revealing to us that the son was already here. The child was something new, but the son was already here, and the son was placed on the inside of Mary, and Mary wrapped him in humanity because it's illegal to be on the earth without a body. You got to have a body to be down here, amen? That's why the adversary uh, tricked the serpent and entered the serpent because he needed a body to be able to do whatever he was going to do, amen? And so God couldn't just slap the devil upside the head after Adam was deceived by the adversary, God formed a body by way of Jesus Christ using a virgin woman, and Jesus came, and he crushed his head, didn't he? Amen. 
And now everything that's under Jesus' feet is under your feet. Amen. Everything that's under Jesus' feet is under your feet. And so we're learning, we're understanding how to live as kingdom children and how to walk as kingdom children. It's a shame to have all this authority and all this power that we have and not be able to operate it or not uh, use it or, or understand the benefits of it. Amen. But we are heirs to the promise of God. Amen. I'm looking at a whole bunch of sons in this place and a whole bunch of daughters of the king, amen, in this place and a whole bunch of heirs to the promise of God, amen. And so, and so we've been learning in reference to the kingdom how to embrace the kingdom of God. The Bible says when Jesus' disciples uh, wanted to know how to pray, they said, Master, teach us how to pray. John, John the Baptist's disciples had been taught by John how to pray. And so Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thou name? His name is holy. Thou kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, so it always, it's always the plan of God that God's will in your life be the same as the will in heaven, that things manifest in your life on the earth the same way they manifest in heaven. Amen. And, 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 it's, and it's God's plan that we would be conscious of him more than conscious of the earth. Conscious of him more than conscious of whatever trouble or trials you're going through in this earth. Amen. If I become conscious of God, more conscious of God, then I make my God large and my problem small. If I'm conscious of my problem, I make my problem large and my God small. And the only way to be conscious of God is to cultivate a mindset in reference to the kingdom. Amen. So we want to talk about cultivating this morning. Amen. Cultivating is an is a, is a important term. It's an it's a foreign uh, term that, you know, and Jesus spoke uh, about a farmer, so the seeds, you sow seeds and some fell on good ground, some fell on uh, rocky ground, and some fell on uh, a stony ground. Jesus spoke about that as a farmer. So, so a farmer is, is mindful of how to cultivate. And the, cultivating, the cultivation part is us simply uh, uh, putting ourselves in a mindset that, that we are a garden and that we want to get our garden right because there's some seeds that have been sown in our garden that we simply need to dig up. Amen. There's some seeds in your life that you got to dig up. Amen. There's some stuff going on in your life that you simply got to get rid of. And we're going we're gonna to begin to get rid of it today. Let's go to Hosea. Hosea 10 and 12 says, sow for yourself righteousness. It says, sow for yourself righteousness. This goes along with our foundational verse from Matthew 6, 33 that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. You, you cannot seek the kingdom of God without seeking to align yourself with the righteousness of God, the principles of God, the way God does things. So, so, so the righteousness of God is being in right standings with God. Amen. If you paid your mortgage or your rent, you're in right standing with them folk. You won't be getting any phone calls because you're in right standing. To be in right standings with God is to obey, amen, the principles and the way of God, the w will of God, the word of God. And so this word says, so for yourself, uh, sowing is a cultivating, a, a, a farming term, so for yourself righteousness and reap. In mercy, reap in mercy. When we when we sow righteousness, we are we are on on purpose and intentional, deliberately putting ourselves in a position where we're obeying and following the will of God. Amen. And I cannot do it if I don't know the Word of God. I've got to spend some time reading the Word of God so that. I can live a righteous life. It ain't enough. It's not going to be enough just for you to come here on Sunday morning and, and hear old Brian talk. Amen? You have got to leave here with the mindset that, you know what, when you, go, when you got a, a, a bad virus, you go to the doctor and he says, listen, I'm going to start you on some antibiotics. 
And so he writes you a prescription for antibiotics. And if that thing is real bad, he's going to give you a shot, and then he's going to give you an antibiotics. See, the shot of antibiotic kind of gets you started. But the prescription keep you going to get rid of the infection. This ain't nothing but a shot this morning. Amen? To get you going. But you're going to have to go home and read your word. Amen? That's your prescription. Go home and read the word of God. Psalms 1 says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law do he what? Meditate day and night. And the Bible says that he should be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. And so this is the key. I can't just hear the word on Sunday. It's not enough. Nothing but a shot. That shot going to wear off if you don't follow it up with some prescription, if you don't follow it up by prescribing yourself to the Word of God. Amen? So, so, so this, is, this is how we cultivate. This is how we cultivate. Before you can begin to sow something new, you got to remove something old. Amen? You, it's some stuff that's growing on the inside of you. You know it because it's manifesting in your life. I'm going to give you five points when we get to the end. There's some stuff that, that's growing in your life, some things that you are doing that's connected to the old nature. Amen. Amen. Connected to the old tree, connected to the old you. And it is hindering you from being all that you can be and receiving all that God wants you to receive from the kingdom. It is hindering you from looking like, acting like, walking like a kingdom child. Amen. Amen. It is hindering you from the best that God has. You are not the best version of yourself if you ain't walking with God. I know ain't ain't a word, but we're going to use it today. Amen. You're not the best version of yourself if you're not walking with God. The best version of you is when you are obeying God and walking according to the will of God. You are the best version. Amen. God can use you. God can do some things with you. Amen. Praise God. The blessings of God flow in your life when you're obeying God. So you got you to gotta cultivate. The mindset, cultivate. I've got to cultivate. If you ever drove in the country and you saw a beautiful garden, you say, oh, man, that garden is so beautiful. Well, what you probably didn't say was somebody took some time. Somebody took some time digging up and, and getting the root system out of there, getting old stuff out of there, getting boulders and, 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 and rock and stuff out of there so that they could make those lines nice and straight so they can get those mounds looking just right before they begin to sow some seeds. When they got the ground right, the preparation right, then they were able to sow seeds, and man, all you're seeing is the end results of something that had been prepared. Amen. You're seeing what's growing after they got the ground right. Cultivation is getting the ground right so that we can sow righteousness and reap mercy. Amen. It says break up your follow ground. That, breaking up the follow ground is breaking up that old stuff that's on the inside of us. Amen. There's some stuff on the inside of us that still holds on. Some things that you sold when you didn't really know Jesus, uh, didn't really understand how to walk with him. Some, some things you, you may have followed your parents or followed your friends. Some things that you held on to. Some strongholds. The Bible says to break up the follow ground. Amen. You, you gotta, you, it's so heavy that you can't just move it all at one time. You got to break it up and begin to move it pieces at a time. Amen. And breaking it up is even a challenge of itself because you can't break it up on your own. You got to break it up with the help of God, with the help of God. Everything, everything that we need comes from the Lord. Amen. Everything that we need comes from the Lord. And I'm expecting this in 2024 for the Abounding Grace Church family and friends. Amen. Is that and, and this, will be, this will be the year that you walk in blessings. This will be the year that you walk in favor. This will be the year that the miraculous begin to happen when miracles return to your family, amen, when your children will be saved, amen, where, where your loved ones will be saved, where your bodies will be healed. This is going to be the year, amen, where something good is going to happen. And you're going to say it's all because of God. 
It's not going to be because it just accidentally happened. It's going to happen because you are on purpose, intentional, deliberately doing something for something to change and manifest in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. This is the year where we can't be lazy. Amen. This is the year where we, where we have to establish a process. Process. I was listening to, to um, uh, the, the, um, um, Steve Curry. You know, they, they were talking about they've been winning games now. The Warriors have been winning. And, um, and they were asking him a question. He said, well, we got away from the process. And he kept going back to that, the process. And I'm a believer of processes. That, pro- that a good process is going to get you the end results. Amen. You can say to me, Pastor, I'm going to lose some weight. I'll say, how are you going to lose it? You say, well, I really hadn't thought about that. Well, you probably are not going to lose any weight. But you can come back and say, well, I'm, I'm going to stop eating sweets and my breads. I'm going to work out three times a week. I'm going to get on the track and I'm going to walk and, and I'm going to do this and that. And I'm going to say, that's your process. Your process is going to lead you to the results. Amen. Processes leads to results. And the process of being a kingdom child is going to take place when we first sow righteousness and reap mercy. When we first break up the follow ground. Oh, that's my process. My process is I'm going to stop doing some of those things I used to do. I'm going to get away from those things that, that have caused me to go down and not follow the plan of God. Amen. I'm going to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How are you going to do that? I'm going to begin to pray. I'm going to feed on the word of God. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to fellowship with other believers, and I'm going to surrender those things in my life that hinder me from being all that God can, desires me to be. When I do that, oh, my God, something is about to turn around on, in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you are about to be a kingdom-minded child. You are about to experience the kingdom of God. The will, the, 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 the will in heaven is about to manifest in your life. Hallelujah. You are about to bind some things and loose some things and call things which are not as though they were. Something is about to happen in your life because you got a process. And that process begins with cultivating and uprooting and sowing seeds, the seeds of righteousness. Hallelujah. Something good going to happen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Say something's good. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Say it's the process. Come on, say it again. It's the process. Amen. So what that means is what you're buying into is it's not just going to happen at church, at the assembly. This ain't really church. We call this church, but we are the church. We are the body of Christ. This is just the meeting. That's all it is. Ain't nothing but a meeting, y'all. It's a meeting where the children of God come together to hear the word of God. We enter the gates with thanksgiving in our heart and into the courts with praise. And now we are hearing the word of God so that we can go forth and serve. Amen. We don't do a whole lot of serving in here. We serve out there. We are the army of the Lord. This is boot camp. Amen. We are, we are undergirding each other. We're lifting each other up. Amen. We're, we're building each other up so we can go forth and serve. Amen. God got some good things for your life, Alex. I'm telling you, man, he got some good things for your life. Every time I look over that way, God said, tell him I got something good for him. He got some good things for you. Hallelujah. So sow sow for yourself righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your follow ground, for it is time. Say it's time. Look at your neighbor, say it's time. Say, don't be saying it to me, say it to yourself. It's time. It's, we good at saying stuff to other folk, amen? It's time you ought to get yourself together, and you ain't even got yourself together. It's time, it is, for it is time to seek the Lord. Amen. It's time to seek God. It's time to stop playing. It's time to stop living your own way. It's time to stop living according to your own will. It's time to stop faking and shaking, Amen. It's time to stop crying. It's time to stop waiting. It's time. Hallelujah. God, if you ain't waiting on God, God waiting on you. Amen. I'm just waiting on, you ain't waiting on God. God been ready for you to get your stuff together. God has been ready for you to to bless you, walk you into something new, do something fantastic in your life. He's waiting on you to do it. It's time. 
And, and, and see, God don't do nothing that you don't seek. You, he, he's not going to just bless you if you're not seeking it. Seeking ye shall find. Amen. All the time, them disciples with Jesus, they didn't even know how to pray. Why didn't they know how to pray? Because they never asked them. It wasn't until they say, Master, teach us how to pray. And, and Jesus said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to pray. I've been wanting to teach you, but you never asked. I've been wanting, I, I, I could have taught you a long time ago. But I'd only give you what you ask. Amen. Jesus goes and heals this boy at the bottom of the mountain when his disciples couldn't do it. And, and then Jesus didn't tell them why they couldn't do it until they asked, Master, why could we not do that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. And then he told them why they couldn't do it. He only will do what you ask. Blind Bartimaeus sitting on the side of the road. Son of David, son of David. He's blind. Jesus, you know this man is blind. Jesus stops. Bring him to me. Blind Bartimaeus, what is it you want? Jesus, don't you know he want to see? I know, I know what he want, but you got to tell me. What is it you want? Some people sit back and say, Jesus know what I'm going through. Yeah, he know what you're going through, but he says, ask. He says, seek. He says, knock. Amen. You're going to keep sitting there till you get old and gray. Amen. But the way the kingdom work, in the kingdom, we ask. We seek. We knock. And it shall be given unto us. And if we do that, we can have the faith that whatever we ask God, he's going to do it. Whatever we seek, we're going to find. Whenever we knock, the door is going to be open. Amen. Because we serve a God that cannot lie. One that will never have to repent. Amen. His words that have come from his mouth will not be returned void. Hallelujah. But they'll do exactly what he said that they will do. Amen. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. I'm a kingdom child. If you're a kingdom child, you got to act like it. You got to walk like it. You got to talk like it. And you can't do that if you are not cultivating, if you're not removing some of those old things. Amen. Those old things have got to be removed by you. Your will has got to be surrendered for the will of God. You got to give up your will. Give up your will and give up your way. It's, it's, not hard, it's not easy to do if you try to do it on your own. But he never, he didn't design you to do it on your own. God designed us that we would call on him. Amen. He says, trust, the Bible says in Proverbs, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all things, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He didn't say, do it yourself and then come check with me. He says, he says trust me with everything, and I will. I'm going to show you how to let that boyfriend go. I'm going to show you how to let that girlfriend go. I'm going to show you how to, how, to, how to walk out of that situation. You, oh, you thought, oh, you, thought you, you thought you was locked in that situation? God said, no, when you come to me, old things will pass away. Behold, everything becomes brand new. Amen. You think you can't do it. On your own, you can't do it. But with God, you can do it. I can do all things. Come on, say it with me. I can do all things. I'm saying, say it for yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. See, I think I'm at my morning, my 8 o'clock service, because when I start saying that, they repeat it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, so, see sometimes you don't know what to say. You just got to get with the person that's saying it. Amen. And that's how you get blessed sometimes. Amen. Just, just, I don't know what, I'm just, I ain't really, I don't know, but he's saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Man came up to me and said, what is hallelujah? I was saying hallelujah. What did that mean? It don't matter. You keep saying it. You're going to figure it out. Man, that's the highest praise. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Amen. So we, 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 we got to cultivate. We got to cultivate. You, you, you will not cultivate unless you first identify some of the things that you're doing are contrary to the will of God. You got to get to where you don't like those things. 
You say, God don't like them, I don't like them. They're in me. I do this, but I don't like what I do. I, I'm, I don't like the things that I do. I don't like the ways that I act. I don't like how I yell at my children, scream at my wife. Huh? Hey, brothers. Don't look at them, sister. Don't look at them. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like the way I do that. I, I don't like the way I curse and have to apologize. Amen. Amen. And, and so those are some of the things that's already sown in your garden that you got to break up to follow ground on because you got some new stuff to sow down there. And then people be seeing you like you are, you're a hypocrite because you, you, you're cussing out of one mouth and the other mouth you're saying, can I pray with you? Say, hold on. I don't know which, you know, they don't know what's going on. So you, 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 you want to be a witness and not cause anybody to stumble. Amen. Amen. You want to be a witness. You want to be a witness first in Jerusalem. That's at home. The people at your house know they really know about you. When the doors close, they, they really know. They really know everything about you. Jordan, Jordan them know everything about me. Amen. When the door, y'all know some things, but they know everything. Amen. And so, but I want to be a witness first in Jerusalem at home. And then in Judea, outside of my house. And then in Samaria, in the outer in the other parts, and then in the outermost parts, amen? And you, and, but we start at home. And so, the, the, but the mindset starts at home too because it's when I begin to say, I don't want, because I'm kingdom and because I want to be conscious of the kingdom of God all day long and I'm expecting God to do things for me and because I'm a kingdom child and this word tells me to seek first the kingdom of God, then I want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to hinder me. Uh -uh. I don't have time. I don't have time for stuff to hinder me. I don't have time for stuff to get in my Do you have time for stuff to get in your way? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm done with that. Say, I'm done with that. I don't have time for nothing to get in my way. I don't have time to be with people, amen, that's in my way, amen. Amen. I'm seeking the kingdom of God. I'm seeking the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. My body's sick and I want to be healed. I don't have time to be around people that's in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. God has promised me things that I want to experience the things that God has promised me. So I want to be sure to, to put myself in a position where I'm breaking up everything. Some places you got to stop going. Some people you got to stop hanging with. Amen. Amen. Uh, some, 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 it's, just, it's just a mindset, and, and, and you know those things because they connect you to the old nature. And I'm laying an axe at the old nature. I want to I chop that nature down. Jesus has already died. He's already been crucified. He's already laid an axe at that old nature. Amen. Jesus rose from the grave. He says, he says go tell my brothers that I live. He says, go tell my brothers and Peter that I live and that I have authority in both heaven and on earth. See, before, before Jesus died, he only had it in heaven. But after he died and defeated the adversary, went down to, to, to hell and got the keys of, 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 of death, of life and death, got, got the keys of death from him, then he said, I got the, I got the power, authority in both heaven and in earth. Amen. Praise God. So, so, so everything we do, everything we do, brothers and sisters, is, is, is we, are, we are tearing up the stuff on the inside of us. There's some seeds that have been sown. Maybe you inherited some stuff. Maybe, maybe there's some stuff that you inherited from mama and daddy and granddaddy. You inherited, and, and you're doing the same thing that somebody in your family used to do. Folk call them generational curse. I'm here to tell you that you've already been delivered from it. Amen. Amen. You're, you're already delivered from it. But just because people are delivered, they, sometimes they ain't got the email. They ain't got the memo they've been delivered. So they keep acting like they, they, keep acting like they got the problem. Amen. You're delivered from that stuff. 
when Jesus died, he died for all of your shame and all of your curses. They were all nailed on the cross. Amen. And so you are set free. And who the Lord has set free, free indeed. Amen. So don't you go around telling nobody, well, I just do this. Because no, you do it because you hadn't realized you're free. You're still locked up because you think you're still locked up. Hallelujah. You're free. What mom and them did, you're free from it. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You are free. That's what Jesus did. Jesus' death on Calvary's cross freed you. So now I got to realize I'm free. And instead of, instead of operating off of them old seeds, I got to begin to plant some new seeds. And the new seeds is the Word of God. Amen. My friend, my friend uh, Rod Mustella, who was pastor of um, Summer Grove Church in the mall, when they, first, when they first built that church, I took our leadership staff over there. Some of y'all that was leaders at the time may remember that. We sit down and Rod was, Rod was overwhelmed because he had had um, a lot of families that had left his church because they didn't want to move from the telecommunication building where they were at over to that church. He lost 150 families when he made that move. But he felt God told him to make that move, and he made that move. And while we were there, he, he began to tell me about when he first moved to Shreveport, he had a desire for okra, lo loved okra. He said, so the deacons came over and planted some okra. He said, Brian, they planted me a garden of okra. He said, I had as much okra as I needed. He said, I had so much okra, I got sick of okra. He said, I had so much okra, I didn't want no more okra. I didn't want to see okra. He said, I didn't even want to go to the produce section of the store to see okra because I was sick of okra because I, I saw it so much. He said, so I didn't want to tell them that I wanted to remove the okra. He said, so I did it myself. He said, I started digging it up, putting it in bags. And he said, I'm dragging it across the yard. He said, what I didn't know, it was dropping seeds <laughs> everywhere I was going. He said, I'm dragging it up the stairs and dragging it down the stairs. He said, man, the next year I had okra under the stairs. I had everywhere I drug it, those seeds had dropped. And the okra was growing, even if he didn't want it. There's some stuff that you have uprooted that's been dealt with already by Jesus Christ that's still growing in your life. It's, but you have, to, you, have to, you have to go ahead and you have to understand the, 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 the residual, the residue part of it is still there. You just got to realize, I got to get rid of this. And you know what he did? He went ahead and called them deacons because he didn't know what to do. And, and they got all that stuff out of there. So sometimes you need help getting to the next place. You, get help, you, you need help, and, and that's, what, that's what the church is for. That's what the, 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 the preacher is for. The Bible says that he'll give you pastors after his own, his own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So the knowledge and understanding I'm giving you this morning is those things that you're doing that you say, I'm so connected to this. I'm so driven by this. And I know it's against the will and the word of God. And I don't want this in my life because I want to sow seeds of righteousness. That I, that, and I'm telling you the way to get rid of it is you go to God. You go to God in prayer, and you begin to do some of the five things that I'm going to give you, and you're going to see those, those things begin to break up in your life. You first have to have a mindset that I want God more than I want anything. I want to work with God. I want to walk righteous. I want to live a righteous, holy life more than I want anything. I want to be pleasing to God. Amen? Over in Colossians. Amen. Colossians says this to us. It says, it says in Colossians 3, 3, 1 and 2, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. Don't, those things that I used to do, don't seek those things. Seek those things which are above. And those things which are above is the word of God, the righteousness of God. Seek. If they don't, it don't just happen. You got to seek them. It don't just happen because you see it and because somebody said you have on purpose. You got to seek. You got to seek it. You got to seek to live a holy life. Seek to live a righteous life. Seek to do those things that God has, has encouraged you to do. You know, some of you are going to wake up in the morning, and some of you may already have some issues that you're facing tomorrow. You got some things that you're facing tomorrow, and they may be overwhelming to you. They're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to worry about those things. You're supposed to say, I'm going to take this to God in prayer. 
I'm not going to allow this to be greater than my confidence in God. I'm not going to be more conscious of my trouble than I am of God. So I'm going to take this over to God. And when I take it to God, I know everything's going to be all right. Amen. And so you, 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 those seeds, those righteous seeds that you're sowing is building up your faith, building up your confidence that when the devil hands you something or life hands you something, you hand it right to God. Amen. You don't sit there and hold it and weigh yourself down. You say, I'm going to give this to God and let God work this out. I'm going to let God open this door. I'm going to let God make a way. I don't care how heavy it is. It ain't too heavy for God. Hallelujah. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. And you were raised with Christ because you accepted him. You were raised with him. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. It says, set your mind on things above. That's what he's saying. Set your mind on the kingdom. Set your mind on the kingdom. Not on the health of your body. Not on your trouble. Not on the doctor's report. Not on the, not on the phone call you just got. But set your mind above. Give God an opportunity to show up and show out in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God an opportunity to amaze you. Hallelujah. Give God an opportunity to do what he said he would do if you would seek him. So, so set your mind above. It's hard when you, when you got something real close to you. When you, when, it, when you can, t when you see it, it's very tangible. But let me explain this to you. You are more spirit than you are physical. Paul said it in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, that we are spirit, soul, and body. When, when, when you die, this body is going back to the earth. You're going to still have a spirit. You are more spirit than anything. And so because you can see it, because you can feel it, then you feel like it's, it's, it's bigger than your spirit. It is not larger than your spirit because you are more spirit. It's just because you are in this body, you can see it. You can feel it. You can hear it. You can hear that phone call. You can read that letter you got. You can, you can, you can see it. You know what I'm saying? But the spirit, which is connected to God, and God said, I am spirit. Come to me in spirit and in truth. He says, I'm spirit. And because he, he told us to come to him in spirit, he's saying, you spirit too. He says, come to me in spirit and in truth because you are spirit too. And so you, you don't let your body and your mind and your hearing and your five senses, amen, get in the way, amen. amen. He says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Amen. So you've got to see yourself. The more time you spend with God, the more you're going to see yourself as the spirit, as a spirit, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you take that problem to God. I don't care if it's a problem that you brought in your own life. Oh, this is something I've done and something I've got to get out of. The devil is a lie. Man, I take everything to God. He says, bring everything to God in prayer. Be anxious for nothing. He didn't say, don't be anxious for those things. Just be anxious for the things. No, no. He says, be anxious for nothing. Amen. Carry it all to God in prayer. Everything. You made some mistakes. That's okay. Take it to God in prayer. You failed again. That's okay. Take it to God in prayer. Hallelujah. He will by no wise put you out. He'll hear you when you cry. He'll hear you when you call his name. Hallelujah. Corey, you ain't messed up too bad to where you can't go back to God. God is waiting on you to come back. Arms are wide open. I don't know how many times he got to show it to us. Prodigal son said, Daddy, give me everything you got that you would give me uh, when, I, when, I, when I leave here, when you die. Give me everything, uh, my inheritance. And the father did. In essence, the boy was saying to his daddy, you dead to me. You dead to me, so give me what you would give me if you were really dead. And the, and the father did. And the boy went out and he squandered everything that he had. Found himself working at a man taking care of his swine, taking care of his pigs. And then one day he came to himself. 
He said, my daddy's servants are better off than I am. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go back to my dad and, and I'm going to tell him that I'll be a servant. See, he himself was like most of us. Didn't he really understand the father? He didn't understand that every day his dad's standing out there on the road looking down saying, I hope my boy come home today. I bet he go to the general store saying, y'all, have y'all seen my boy? Because that father was looking for his son. But the son thought he had messed up so bad. He said, I'm going to go back to my father because even the servants are better off there. And I'll just be a servant. Boy, one day he got on, he got up, was heading back. Stench smelled stinky, smelled like them pigs. Probably been eating what they were eating, amen. And that morning, his dad looked down the road. Oh, God, there go my son. Man, I bet if he was drinking a cup of coffee, he'd drop that cup of coffee. And the Bible said the only time in the Bible where we can see God run, he took off running. And he tackled his son, fell up on him, kissed him, didn't care how he smelled, didn't care what was on him. All he cared about was my son was lost. Now he back home. My son was doing his will. Now he come back here. The boy never had an opportunity to tell his dad, I just came back to be a servant. He didn't even let him get that out. He just said, go get, go get a coat. Go get a ring. Go bring some shoes. And we're going to have a party tonight because my son is back home. That's how, and, and, and that was a story, a parable. It wasn't even true. It was just what God put in his word so that we could see his heart as a father. That's how the father is towards you. That we would that we would come back to him. That we would surrender our will. No matter what issues you have. No matter how much you've messed up. He says, I'm always waiting for you to come back. With my arms wide open. Amen. The boy smelled. God covered it with a coat. The boy had been other places. He put new shoes on his feet because he was going somewhere new now. You follow me? He put a ring on his finger because a ring was symbolic. Like my wife got a ring on her finger. I take my ring off sometime to take a shower. I'm about to leave the house. She said, where your ring at? I said, oh, I forgot it. Put your ring on. Because she want everybody out there to know I belong to somebody. Because that's what that ring said. You belong to somebody. When that man put his ring on that boy's finger, he wanted everybody to know that boy belonged to me. I don't care what he's done. He belonged to me. You follow me? That's what the ring is symbolic of. Pharaoh did the same thing with Joseph. When he made Joseph, put Joseph in charge, he put a ring up on his finger. So said, people going to see him and know he ain't from here. But when they see that ring, they going to know he with me. You follow me? And so God has done the same thing for us. He has put us in a position where when people see us, they know we belong to him. That he's covered all of our sin. Amen. The sin of the world is no longer upon you. Amen. And then God said, we're going to have a party. The angels in heaven rejoice whenever one comes to, to God. Whenever we come to God, the angels in heaven have a party. Rejoice. Amen. Because we were once lost and now we're back home. And so God, God is trying to get us to think about the things that are above and not about the things that we're going through. The things that you're going through are so small in comparison to what God can do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't you measure what you're going through against God because whatever you're going through, it, God, it, it's just a pimple to God. Oh, it ain't no pimple to you, but it's a pimple to God. And when you, when you begin to think like God, you'll say, there ain't nothing but a pimple right there. That thing's small. I don't, I don't care how much it is. I don't care how big it is. I don't care what it looked like. Ain't nothing impossible for God. When you've done all that you can, God will do all that you can. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's finish. Amen. Amen. Psalms, Psalms 119.2. It says, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. So, so this cultivating... It's re- it requires you to seek God with your whole heart. That means everything. I'm seeking him in every area of my life. Every area of your life, you seek in him. Every day, every area, every decision, small or large, 
I'm seeking him. Because I'm establishing and cultivating new ways, I'm taking everything to the Lord in prayer. And I'm establishing, I'm establishing a regiment, a process, so that, you know, when, when you're starting something new, you got to have a process. You can't just freelance. You can't just, you know, freestyle it. You got to have a process that you hold yourself accountable to. Your job, when they bring you on for the first time, they, they, they give you an orientation, they onboard you, and they show you the way they want you to do it. That's a good job. Now, a bad job ain't going to do that. They're going to just say, hey, this is your job, and, you know, and then you're going to fail, and then they're going to terminate you, and you're going to say, well, y'all never showed me what to do, or nobody never told me what to do. They just expected you to do that. A good job's not going to do that. A good job wants you to be successful. A good place wants you to be successful because they invested in you. They spent time onboarding you. They don't want to lose that money they onboarded you with. So they're going to bring you on. They're going to give an orientation. We're going to orientate you for two weeks. You're ready to go to work. And then we're going to give you a 90-day working test period. Um, and, you know, and then after that, if you're any good, we're going to hold on to you. We might give you a raise. But they're processing you in. And as long as you are checking every box, you're going to be successful. They can fix you if something happened. They, they know where to step in at because they know what they taught you. So the same way as you cultivate yourself, you have to establish a process. And the process gets you to the results. And the ultimate results is that we follow him, that we trust him, that we have confidence in God. That's the results. The end results is I'm not going to be overwhelmed. I used to be overwhelmed. I used to be depressed, but I'm not going to be overwhelmed or depressed anymore because my process has led me to the results, and the results are that I trust God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. My results is that my mind is stayed on him. My results is that now I used to default to being worried. I used to default to, being, to complaining, but now I default to praising God. Now I default to saying, God, I, God, I know, God, I'm just, I thank you for taking care of this. I thank you, God, for handling this. I thank you. You used to, the first thing come to your mind used to be worry and fear. You, you used to call mama first. Now you say, I call God first. I don't call mama first. I don't call pastor first. I'm calling God first. Amen. Praise God. I ain't calling my friend. I, I don't need her advice and his advice. I'm calling on the Lord. Amen. Praise God. How did, you, how did you get to that? Well, it was a part of my process. You follow me? It's a part of my process. And so, and so uh, uh, Psalms, Psalms 119 and 11 says, your word, part of the process, have I hidden in my heart that I might not. It, see, see, it didn't say that you would for sure not. That I might not. Sin. Just because the word of God is in your heart is not a guarantee. But without the word of God, you, you can't even say might. With the word of God in your heart, I might not sin against him. See, the word of your heart represents the garden, rep represents where the seed of the word of God has been sown. Oh, God, let that seed that's sown into our heart, God, let it go so deep in our heart. And God, protect that seed, cover that seed in the name of Jesus. God, let it break open. Let the roots of that seed go deep in our heart and let it begin to bear fruit. Protect the fruit, God, and let others begin to take up that fruit in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so here's the five, here's the five points. The, the first one is reflect on scriptures. Number one, reflect on scripture. You have to reflect on scripture. And this is what it means. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring yourself to the word of God. You gotta study the word of God regularly, and you gotta reflect on the teachings of God's word. And the examples that are found in the Bible. And you got to allow the wisdom and the truth of the scriptures to shape your thoughts. The word of God, reflect on it. It has to shape your thoughts. Reflect on the scripture. When you're making a decision, everything that you're doing, you got to reflect. You got to reflect on the word of God. Because that is sowing 
righteousness. The word of God is the, the word of God. Remember, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but the word of God is going to endure forever. The word of God, I want to align myself to the word. This is God's word. If, the word, if, if I feel like I'm, I'm upset with something, I'm upset with somebody, or I haven't forgiven, well, the word of God tells me to forgive. I got to reflect on that word, and I, and, and I got to follow that word because I'm on purpose trying to be, take stuff out of my garden. I got unforgiveness in my garden, and the word of God says forgive. Amen. So, I'm, I, so, so here, here it is where I might not. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not. I know to forgive. I know to forgive. But, but am I going to forgive because the word of God is in my heart? Amen. I, 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 if, if I'm cultivating, if I'm sowing righteousness, if my intent is to grow in God and the knowledge of God, then I don't care who offends me in this ministry or who offends me outside of this ministry. I, you, listen. What God has for me is greater. And I, I choose not to be offended. I choose not to, to have unforgiveness. Listen, God is too good to me. I would rather God talk about me as much as you will. Let God, y'all don't do it. I'm just saying, if people do that, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Because what God has is much greater. Hallelujah. Y'all follow me? Amen. So, so, so reflect on the scriptures and allow the wisdom of the truth of the scriptures to shape your thoughts and beliefs. That's what you want. You want God's word to shape your thoughts and, and, and what you believe. Listen, you, you will never experience the blessings of God if you don't follow this, if you don't think this way. If the mind of Christ is not in you, you'll never follow You'll always deal with trouble. That's number one. Number two is, is um, prayer and surrender. Cultivating a kingdom mind involves a deep and intimate relationship with God. It, it involves a deep and intimate. So you got so prayer and surrender. When you pray, you're going to want to surrender. You will never surrender if you don't pray. Prayer brings you close to God. And when you get close to God, you have a heart to surrender. When you, the, the closer you get to God, man, you're walking with God, you be like, man, I want to give something up. I, want, I don't want to continue to be like, because when you're walking with God, there's a peace. Woo. There is a peace that you can't even explain. There's a joy. There's a, there's, there's a, that's the best you ever feel is when you're walking with God. So when you're walking with God, you say, I want to surrender something. I want to give up. And so, and so, and so. It cultivates a mindset for that. Through prayer, seek his guidance, his wisdom, and strength. Surrender your desires, your ambitions. Surrender your fear to him and invite his spirit to transform your heart and mind. When you're walking, when you're praying, ask God, ask God, say, God, transform the way I think. I don't, I don't want to think this way, God. I don't want to be this way. So, so, so while you're praying, Lord, Lord, transform. That's you surrendering. Transform my mind. Transform the way I think. If every time you open your mouth, something negative comes out, something ugly comes out, the Bible says from the abundance of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. So guess what? It's coming from your mouth because it's in your garden. Amen. If you change what's in your garden, what comes out of your mouth change. Amen. Years ago when I was cultivating, I didn't even know I was cultivating. I was just seeking God. And I was seeking to be close to God. I mean, I was, you know, I was a, I used to be, you know, when I was a fireman, I was a cusser, man. I was a cusser. You just, you just, everybody was, I think. <laughs> everybody smoked and everybody cussed. And, and, and one day I was seeking God. I had been seeking God for, for months. And I was opening this big gate at my job, and it was a metal gate and a little Pebble had the wheel, the metal wheel stuck, and I had flip-flops on. It just worked out, and I pulled it, and that round metal wheel landed on my toe, my big toe. And I started hopping. I said, Jesus, and I caught myself. My toe was throbbing, but I caught myself that what came out of my mouth was Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I was like, 
man, I knew something had changed. I knew, I wasn't even thinking about my toe. I was so overwhelmed with, I had said Jesus. That that was, I was just thankful because, you know, had it been a few months before that, something else would have came out. Amen. Don't imagine. Amen. But something else would have came out. But when you begin to cultivate, it changes what's in your heart. And what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. So if you want to know what's in your heart, what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. Not when things are good, but when things are not so good. Not when people are treating you right, but when people are not treating you right. What's coming out your mouth? What's coming out your mouth is what's in your heart. And that gives you a way to measure. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen since I said that. Everybody's going to be under a test. Amen. Every teacher gives a test. And when you test it, you're going to know what's in your heart because it's going to come out your mouth. And then you'll be able to say, Lord, take this out of my heart because I don't want this to come out of my mouth. I thought I had dealt with this, Lord, but I need you to deal with it for me in the name of Jesus. And that's you, that's you, that's prayer and surrender. That's how you surrender. Number three is renewal of thoughts. Actively engage in the renewal of your thoughts. Identify and challenge every influence that comes your way. Everything that comes your way, every worldly thought that comes your way, challenge it. Challenge and renew your thoughts. Choose not to think the way that is opposite of the will of God. So, so listen, this is a process. It's a process. Don't beat yourself up. Every day, if you activate this process, you're going to be better. You, if When you have a thought that comes up, the Bible says to cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into the captivity, obedience of Christ Jesus. So when you, you cannot control your thoughts sometimes. Even as a saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit person, following Jesus person, you still have some thoughts. And so you have to renew those. You have to bring those thoughts into the obedience of Christ Jesus. Don't choose not to have those thoughts. You can't cho choose not to engage with those thoughts. Amen. Those thoughts are going to come. You cast them down. Say, uh-uh. No, no, no. That doesn't align itself with the will and the plan of God. That does, that does not align itself with what I'm putting in my garden. Yes. Amen? Yes. I'm not going to talk to you ugly. I'm not going to speak to you ugly. I'm not going to run you down. You, 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 you do something. I, you know, I'm just going, Lord, give me what to say and how to say it. Amen? Yes. You bring yourself, you're surrendering yourself to, to the will of God. God, God, let when I open my mouth, God, let me say what you would have me to say. You, you, you work, you're working your process, and as you work your process long enough, yeah. it's going to be the way of life yeah. because you, you, know, you know what's happening? You're seeking God. Yeah. When you do it, God is saying, look at my child. Look at my baby down there. Look at what she's doing, and he's going to walk with you closer, yeah. and he's going to keep opening up new things. The more you seek him, the more abundantly he will open things up. The more and more God's going to open things up. And, the, and when God opened things up for you, the ultimate, it's not just for you. It becomes a blessing for your family, a blessing for your children, a blessing for the people in your job. God is preparing you to be an ambassador, preparing you to be a disciple, preparing you that your hands will be his hands extended. God's a spirit. He needs some hands. God's a spirit. He needs a body. Amen. He's given us dominion over the earth. So he needs someone that will be the, invest, the, inv the, the invisible expression of him yeah. in this earth. Yeah. And we become that invisible expression of him. So renewal of your thoughts. Amen. Yeah. Replace them with thoughts that are aligned with love, Amen. compassion, yeah. Amen. grace, yeah. humility. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what people ought to know about you. Oh, she's, she's just so patient. So just have a spirit of humility. Have a spirit of love. Is that what they're saying about you now? Amen. Amen. Number four is, 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 is a, a community accountability. Community accountability. It's surround yourself with fellow believers who share a commitment. You got to get with somebody else. 
I need somebody. I need a partner. I, this week I, I spent with a, a good friend of mine from Port Allen, Pastor Winfield was in town, and we spent uh, two days together, Wednesday and Thursday, we spent together. And I loved it. So you got to be around uh, people who are accountable. And every week I try to hang around somebody or talk to someone. You got to have an accountability person that's in your circle. Amen. Somebody that's going the same way you're going. Amen. You can't hang out. You can't, you, you're not strong enough if you're not there yet to bring people along. I'm going to help you. We, we too busy trying to help people and we need help, help ourselves. Amen. I, I, I need somebody. Sometimes you're in a position to help and sometimes you're in a position where you need to, you need to go with somebody that's, that's where you're at or stronger. Amen. So we can help keep each other accountable. We can walk together. Amen. 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 And, and if you say, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of introverted. That's okay. You can be introverted. Still get somebody to walk with, okay? Still get somebody. You're, you're, you're only that way because you say that. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put being introverted on the side right now. Right now, I need somebody that's walking and going in the same direction I'm going in. So that we can, let's be accountable, okay? Let's be accountable. It says, it says, engage in meaningful discussion, accountability, and mutual encouragement within a supportive community. Whoever you're with, it could be husband and wife. Yeah, that could, that's the best partner you can have. It could, it could be somebody on your job. It could be somebody in this church. Find somebody that, 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 that hey, did you get what Pastor was saying? Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Oh, let's get together. We're going we gonna to be accountable. I'm going to hold you. I'm get, let me get your number. We're going to talk every day, and let's be accountable. Let's walk in it. Let's share a verse on the phone. Share with me what you went through today. Don't be ashamed of it. Amen. This is what I went, man, these thoughts came up, and I cast them down. Amen. 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 The, uh, that was number four, right? Number five is um, um, daily, in your daily life, have an application in your daily life. Intentionally apply the principle of the, ki of the kingdom in your, in your daily life. Let your actions, your decisions, your responses mirror the character of Christ. Every single day, let apply that. Every single day, apply that to your life. Apply it to your life. Every single day, apply walking like Christ. Amen. You, you know, back in the day, they had, what would Jesus do? Listen, that was cool, right? But you got to know what he would do from here. You got to know what, the, what you got you to gotta have the mind of Christ. If you pray for that, if you seek the mind of Christ, if you seek the mind of Christ, you will have the mind of Christ. Amen? You, don't, don't, just be, don't, don't just be satisfied being a good person. Oh, she a good person. No, be satisfied being a godly person. A Christ-like person. Amen? You can only be Christ-like if you're following and seeking God. You think it takes years. does not take years. It, however much you put in, it's what you get out. Whatever you put in with God, it's what you get out. Amen? If you put a little in, you get a little out. If you put a whole lot in, you get a whole lot out. Amen? If you're seeking him day and night, man, things are going to transform in your life day and night. Amen. This word is a seed. And this seed goes into your heart. And it breaks open. The Bible says, unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground. Amen. And over a period of time, it opens up. And then it produces even more. That little bitty acorn. That little bitty Oak tree acorn falls off the tree. Sometimes you see it on the asphalt. It don't do nothing on the asphalt. But man, when it falls in the right place, they're under the right temperature, under the right rain and all that, man, it produces another tree, right? And that's what happens with the word, with God's word. We're cultivating on purpose, intentional. Amen. Amen. See, that, that's what, back in the day, that's what Sunday school and all that was for. Sunday school, the intent of Sunday school was to cultivate. The, the, the intent of small groups were to cultivate. Not so people could just get together and have community and have social groups, but no, to cultivate 
a walk with God to transform your heart, to transform the seeds of your heart, to be able to follow God. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's stand up. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for the process in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that the, the work of the Holy Spirit helps us as we seek you, Lord. As we hunger and thirst for you, it is the Holy Spirit that's working in us at your will to do those things that you desire. And so, Father, we give room to the Holy Spirit to build us up. Father, we know that we can't do anything without your truth and without knowledge of your truth and understanding of your truth. But we do know that once understanding and knowledge has come, that we can walk in wisdom in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we pray that as, G, as you talk, your disciples before they went out and served, that we too have stood before disciples this morning and we have given them your word that they too can go out and serve and be your hands extended. God, cultivate us. Let the seed of your word that we just spoke on, God, let it go deep into the hearts and the soil of our garden is there, God. And protect that seed, God. Let not the enemy come and rob it, but protect that seed until it breaks open and until it takes roots and begins to grow. Protect it, God, with your Holy Spirit and with your presence. And God, let, let it begin to grow. And as it grow on the inside of us, let it begin to produce a closer walk with you, a hunger and a thirst for you, let it produce a mind to seek you, Lord, with our whole heart. Let it, let it cause us to sow seeds of righteousness, God, and reap mercy. God, let the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shine on the inside of us that we may be those who go out and win souls, that we may be those, dear God, who preach and teach your gospel, that we may be those that lay hands on the sick and they recover. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you that we are your hands extended. And we thank you for teaching us on this morning and equipping us on this morning. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.